Uh, so since uh, all our friends from uh, at Kutia Bank uh, are in, so I, I suggest we can start the session. Uh, so uh, the first part will, will consist of two uh, mini lectures, let's call it this way, uh, by our, uh, our friends from uh, at Kutia Bank. And uh, up first is uh, uh, Yuri uh, Tavirikov, uh, who will give a lecture on a loan rate uh, sensitivity models. If I'm correct, <laughs> uh, Yuri, we're not able to hear you. Uh, yes, yeah. hello. Uh, let I start. Uh, one second, I will share uh, the screen. But uh... I, I just gave you the uh, okay, okay, the right. Okay, so the stage is yours. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Second. Uh, do you see the screen, my screen? Yes. Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, yes, good. Um, okay. Uh, good evening, uh, dear participant and organizer of the competition. Uh, my name is uh, Yuri Tavirikov. Uh, I'm one of the data science team lead in the next back section team in the tribe uh, CVM, uh, customer value maximization uh, of the open bank. Uh, uh, as the name of our team suggests, uh, we are committed to uh, improving the quality of the interaction between our bank and uh, our clients by choosing the optimal communication plan uh, with our clients. And the, uh, at the competition, the participants solved uh, the problems uh, proposed by our team of choosing clients of, uh, for communication of, on the uh, cash loan. Uh, today, I want to tell you about another type of problems we face, uh, about uh, optimization of parameters of the offer using uh, uh, an example of problem of selecting optimal, optimal loan rate. Uh, generally, the task uh, uh, is as follows. Uh, determine the optimal rate for each client. Uh, that means that uh, we must uh, personally offer each client a rate based on some logic uh, when uh, communicating with clients with a co cash loan offer. Uh, let's, type, let's start by understanding what needs to be prepared to successfully cope with this challenge. Uh, first, uh, you need to be able to calculate, uh, uh, calculate the profit uh, from the sold product uh, for each client personally. Uh, for cash flow, that means that uh, uh, you need to learn how to calculate such indica indicators for clients as uh, interest income, taking account possible early repayments, uh, cost of risks, uh, transfer rate, uh, commission incomes from insurance, and so on. Uh, secondly, we uh, secondly you need to collect your business constraints. Uh, uh, this can be uh, lower or upper bounds on rates for different group of clients, uh, restrictions uh, on the difference uh, uh, on the difference in rates between uh, different group of clients, or it can be restrictions on difference uh, in rates between a financial or regular cash loan. Um, as a search, and of course, the most time consuming and uh, resource consuming things uh, is to collect a training sample. Uh, that means in order to build such models, uh, it's necessary to uh, select random groups of customers uh, covering, all, covering all different types of customers and randomly change their rate at the moment. Uh, if you have made uh, uh, progress on all these points, uh, then you can start the tasks. Um, um, now let's look at the goal we are pursuing. Uh, solving, the, solving methods of the problem uh, will depend on uh, this goal. Uh, 
Uh, it's logical <laughs> to assume that where in the offered rate uh, to the client will change to the expected probability of taking our taking out the loan by these clients, as well as <laughs> the expected amount of the loan. Moreover, it's logical to assume that uh, uh, as the rate decrease, uh, decreases, the probability of responding to offer increases. And of course, uh, the two these simple hypotheses are supported by the data from the uh, test clients. Um, of course, the personal function of profit will directly depends on the rate, uh, have a concave shape as uh, the picture. Uh, when the rate uh, decreases, uh, uh, when more likely to sell the product, uh, but we lose, mo uh, lose most of the interest income. Uh, conversely, when the rate increases, we're less likely to sell the product, but uh, we receive more interest income. Uh, thus, uh, the task uh, has two parts. Firstly, it's necessary to extract from the data the dependence uh, of the probability of buying a loan and the amount of this loan. Uh, and the, after we built uh, personalized elasticity curves, uh, it will be possible to optimize the sum of uh, profits for all clients. Um, let's discuss uh, a little more detail how we solve this problem. Um, the first step is uh, somehow build dependence of the selling of a loan on the offer rate. Uh, the biggest difficulty to do in, uh, is to separate the influence of uh, all other factors on the probability of sale from the influence of the offer trade itself. In such case, uh, machine learning uh, certainly help, helps. And, if, and uh, if we try to take into account the model as many factors as possible, then we can also affect the probability of a uh, client's response to an offer then we can receive the dependencies on the loan rate. Uh, in this case, we use the uh, light GBA model. It showed good quality uh, of the model and gave an in interpretable dependencies on the loan rate. Uh, unfortunately, this is not enough to say that um, we have built a custom elasticity curve. Uh, first, in general, the idea uh, that for each client individually it's possible to find his elasticity curve sounds uh, um, overconfidential. Uh, indeed, in the training sample for a specific client, uh, we can only see uh, uh, one possible rate at the time. Um, Second problem is the gradient boosting model gives uh, stepwise dependencies on the factor, uh, which is also purely interpretable and complicates uh, sub uh, subsequent uh, optimization. Um, so, therefore, uh, the next step we do is clustering our clients in response uh, to different rates. Uh, the feature space here is the scores of machine learning model we built at uh, different rates. For example, we will score our clients when the rate changed by minus one percent, uh, by minus half of percent, uh, without changing rate, uh, plus one half and plus one percent. As a result, uh, five different scores of our model will act as a feature space uh, to clustering. Uh, the cluster metric at the stage does not uh, greatly affect the result. It main things uh, uh, is to choose the uh, right metric between two elasticity curves. Uh, in this case, we choose the cosine mesh here, uh, which seems to be the most logical solution. Uh, in the picture, you can see uh, the typical result of clustering customers by elasticity, the four clustering of clients, some of them uh, green, for example, almost done, don't react to rate changes, expect for a strong drop in rates. Uh, 
most likely in this cluster will, will be optimal to raise the rate. Uh, for blue, for example, it looks uh, like many people will be better with uh, no change in rates. Uh, while orange, uh, on the contrary, lowers the rates as much as possible. Uh, it should be noted that uh, uh, in this way, we only determine the elasticity for each client. Uh, for each client, we compare the de uh, dependencies on the rate changes. Uh, the profit function has, no, uh, has nothing to do with this cluster and remains different for each client. Um, now we can move uh, to the optimization itself. After the analysis of the clients and the construction of the elasticity curves, we are in position to select the rates uh, for the clients. Uh, for this, we use mathematical optimization, namely XI known the changes on the rate uh, for each client from base pricing. Uh, let uh, CI denote the found cluster for each client. And the target function will be the total profit uh, that we will receive from all clients after the rate change. Uh, first, first of all, it depends on the change uh, of the change of the rate itself, uh, since uh, interest income depends on it. Uh, then it depends on probability of responding uh, of the rate, uh, responding uh, to the offer. Uh, which depends on the offer trade and on the client's elasticity cluster. And finally, uh, its uh, profit depends on the amount that uh, the client will take. Uh, of course, the task contains sole business uh, restrictions. Uh, so uh, th that the final rates uh, will be valid. Um, to solve this problem, we used standard package for solving mathematical optimization problem. Uh, the only thing that should be noted here is that uh, uh, they need to approximate the final profit curves for this client with some convex factor uh, so that it would be possible to solve the problem using convex optimization. Uh, and non complicates with solving the discrete optimization problem. After obtaining the solution to this uh, optimization problem and rounding of uh, the answers, uh, the problem can be considered solved and remains only the uh, checking its performance. Um, and of course, the most uh, representative way to check the value of the constructed model is to pass the A-B testing. Uh, that is, uh, it's necessary to fix uh, the parts of the clients for which uh, the rate will be assigned according to the current pricing model, uh, select the clients for which the rate will be assigned according to the model's outputs, and leave uh, a small part of clients to assign random rate uh, on them in order to further enrich the model. Um, we have uh, been smoothly implementing this model of, on our clients. We started with 15% uh, of the flow uh, for which uh, this model works. And now according to our models, uh, the rate is set for half of the flow. Uh, this is where my story about the elasticity model ends and I will give the words to my colleagues and thank you for attention. Um, th thanks a lot, Yuri, for, uh, for, your, for, your, for your lecture and for your contribution. Up next is uh, Olga Filipova. Uh, also from Kritia <laughs> Bank. Uh, so, uh, Olga, giving up stage now to you. Uh, thank you. Hello to everyone. Uh, uh, can you give me rights to share my screen? Uh, sure, give me a second. Yeah, now you, you have the full control over the session. 
Okay, <laughs> wait a second. So we are ready. So hi everyone, my name is Olga Filipova. I'm the team lead in Открытие Bank. And today I will uh, uh, make some make a little lecture about monitoring machine learning models in production. Uh, this is our plan. First, I'll state with what I mean by monitoring here. Uh, then I'll mention why you need to monitor your models. And then we'll discuss what's the difference between machine learning uh, service and the usual software service. Then we'll dive in into details, what exactly we can monitor and which model we can use. Um, and then I'll say a couple of words about popular tools. Uh, and then I'll highlight key principles for monitoring QML system. And then we will analyze an example uh, how can we monitor response model, uh, the task we solve in this competition. Uh, in the term monitoring can mean different things across data science, engineering, DevOps, uh, and the business. So today, when we talk about monitoring, we will focus on the post-production techniques. Uh, there is a concept uh, called three pillars of observability. Uh, what does this mean? Observability is your ability to answer any question about what's happening on the inside of your model by observing um, the outside of the system. Uh, and the main idea here, uh, if you uh, collect uh, metrics, logging and tracing, and probably sum up them together, then you'll be able to answer any answer about your system and uh, find the causes about any issues and so on. It's a high goal. We all want to be here, but uh, here we will talk about problem detection and usually metrics are responsible for this. Okay, so why do we need to monitor our model? We don't just deploy our model once. Uh, we already know that uh, they will break and degrade uh, because of all sorts of issues occur with leaf data. Uh, and in, monkey, in most cases, uh, you wouldn't get bad getaways, error messages. You will get a set of wrong predictions, uh, which looks like good predictions. And the consequence is all yours. I hope you're scared enough right now. So here comes monitoring. Uh, monitoring and alerting uh, enables the system to tell us uh, when it's broken, or even better, when it's about to break. Uh, and when system isn't able to automatically fix itself, we want uh, a human to investigate the alert to find the root cause of the problem. Uh, after we admitted that monitoring is a thing that needs to be done, another question arises. Why are we talking about ML models monitoring separately from usual software systems? And the answer is uh, monitoring learning systems have all the challenges of traditional code and then an additional level of complexity, which is uh, monitoring of the fact that our model is making usable predictions in production. Uh, when we talk about software monitoring, we usually mean um, system health, latency, memory, CPU, disk utilization, etc. In this field, a lot of experience was accumulated. There are a few methods uh, for analyzing the health of any system. You can see three of them on the slide and you can give Google a five of them more. And an important fact uh, here we have the right answers. We do not just have um, expertise why which data to collect. We know what to do with certain alerts. Uh, unlike in traditional software systems, the best practices in machine learning monitor monitoring are often gray and not um, yet well established. But let's find out what extra domains uh, we should look after when we talk about uh, ML systems. 
First one is data quality and its dependencies. So what can go wrong with your data? Data processing issues. It's when the production model doesn't receive the data or it received corrupted data or limited data all due to some pipeline issues. Uh, wrong source, lost access, uh, breaking, broken feature code. Or data schema could change, whatever the reason, uh, new data formats, types, uh, and schemas are really good, rarely good news to the model. And uh, data loss at the source, it's when some physical um, sensor breaks and, uh, no long, and its data no longer available, or external API is not available, and so on. Uh, all these varying issues uh, ask for a number of checks. And some of these errors are trivial, uh, but also most painful to miss. So our goal is to catch them on time. What can we check? Uh, we can check if the feature data types match. Uh, we can check if the level of missing data stays with the normal range. Uh, we can check if the input values in an allowed set for categorical category, uh, inputs or range for numerical inputs. Uh, and we can check feature statistics and distribution. For example, if one of your feature uh, turn out into constant, this is the only way to catch it. Uh, just a second. Sorry. So while the data can be right, uh, the model itself can start degrading. And here are factors which could affect model staleness. Uh, shifts in the environment, for example, if we use historic data to train the models, so we need to anticipate that the population and its behavior might not be the same in current times. Or changes in client behavior, customer preference change with trends and fashion, politics, ethics, etc. Or even adverse uh, adversarial scenarios, uh, bad actors, frauders, criminal, foreign, foreign government may uh, actively seek out weaknesses in your model. So changes can be gradual, expected, sudden, and even seasonal. Uh, these things not always demand uh, intermediate reaction, but uh, you should definitely be aware of it. And here we have two different situations. Uh, first, it's when the answers are given. So we can control quality metrics that are um, like our precisions uh, is same as we expected, for example. Or if, the, if we haven't got right answers right now, we can compare distribution of predictions, um, control SQL statistics, or use some statistical tests. Uh, uh, let's take a look at the list of tools. Uh, it doesn't pretend to be complete, but the useful one. Uh, one of the most popular open source stacks for monitoring metrics uh, is the combination of Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, Prometheus uh, scraps metrics from instrumental jobs. It stored uh, scraped samples locally and um, runs rules over this data to either aggregate or record new time series uh, from existing data or generate alerts. And Grafana can be used to visualize the collected data and uh, it's perfect to make some dashboards. Uh, to collect logs, you can use Grafana Loki. It could be the instrument of choice just because it's for sure uh, integrates with Grafana smoothly. Uh, Cadvisor provides container users an understanding of the resource usage and performance characteristics of their running containers. It runs in a couple lines of code in a Docker file. So if you work in a startup or you're making your pet project, you can easily get uh, all software metrics just out of the box. Uh, and um, the list of uh, startups uh, in the bottom of the slide uh, it's a startups, startups who 
attempts to build innovate tooling to ease model monitoring. And if their uh, products too raw, too rough to use it out of the box, uh, at least it's a great place for finding ideas about solving your problem. So read their blogs, it's really useful. And on this slide, uh, key monitoring related principles are presented. Uh, actually, we mentioned them all above, uh, and it's just a great checklist uh, you should consider when you're releasing your model into the wild. Uh, and uh, a couple advices in the end. <laughs> First one, even simple base monitoring is better than its absence. Uh, it may seem like I'm stating the obvious here, but the problem is real. Uh, on the one hand, monitoring is often uh, perceived as nice to have thing. Uh, on the other hand, reading a list from the previous slide, uh, one can decide that it's a big complicated task for which he doesn't have time or resources right now. Uh, but simple statistic checking would uh, catch a major amount of bugs. So it's 100% better than nothing. Uh, you have model, you should do monitor. And another point, um, think about your task. Uh, uh, you should ask a question, what should you do with certain alert? What thing you should know? For example, if one of 400 features of your model uh, would drift, um, so what, would you investigate this case or not? Or new category, appears uh, in important categorical feature. What's the action? Stop using model prediction for object uh, with such meaning. And it's actually an option in industry if we talk about, I don't know, new, new kind of material. Or such predictions is better than nothing and you can't uh, wait uh, to collect the histories and retrain the model and everything would be fine. So you shouldn't implement all the best practice list only thing that matters, um, only thing that force investigates. It's not a purpose babysit the boards and checking everything again. Okay. And uh, the last slide of practice, uh, a task from our context. We provided by a response model that launched once a month to form advertising companies. Uh, in real life, we have a combination of models, but it's not so important. And here, right answers, uh, where our offers was accepted, uh, we get only a month later. So what uh, we done uh, with this model? Uh, we haven't got uh, different data sources for train and production. So we don't need to um, make a huge amount of checks here. They all just came from our feature store. So uh, we monitor our feature store data using simple statistic state as check, simple statistic checking. We want to make it more complicated and, and more beautiful, but you know, and uh, more in purpose, know your data, not because uh, we accept, we, wait a huge amount of alert here. And um, uh, to control model uh, adequately, we have a golden set of users. Part of, part of them uh, model should rate height, high and part of them low. Uh, it's not so obvious which one uh, put in this task. We just took ones who, um, who were high evaluated of previous model and really taken over. Uh, so every new model after a training um, uh, make prediction to this set and we see that um, it, uh, it's not turned to opposite, that it's stable and adequate. And we compare and reference uh, uh, and production distribution of prediction. Uh, and of course, we have the dashboards with machine learning metrics. It's um, just one point, one point in a month, but um, it helps us to understand trends and what happened with it through the time. And I have another slide with useful links. 
which helped me make this presentation. And if someone wants to uh, go deeper to the theme, uh, here they are. It's really useful materials. Uh, so this is all. Thank you. If you got any question, I can answer them. If not, you can go to the most exciting part of this competition. Oh, thanks, thanks a lot, Olga, uh, yeah. for, a wonderful, uh, for a wonderful presentation, a wonderful lecture, and uh, to Yuri too. Uh, so, uh, dear participants, if you have any questions to Olga or Yuri, uh, please ask away. Uh, we still got time. So, um, um, actually, you can uh, uh, write to the chat box, or otherwise, you can. Uh, just switch on the microphone and <laughs> ask it. <laughs> Whatever option is, uh, is preferable for you. So don't be shy. <laughs> um, it's a wonderful opportunity to, to communicate. So uh, let's wait for a couple of more seconds. Maybe uh, something will come up. So, um, if not, uh, I guess we can uh, move on. Uh, and one more time, uh, Olga, Yuri, thank, thanks a lot for uh, your wonderful contribution. Okay, uh, so up next, uh, we have a part dedicated to, uh, to, the, uh, to the task. So uh, can I see Raman uh, among the participants? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I will give you the rights. Of, uh... I, I don't need the rights. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we want to. No, just... I, I assume we want to hear uh, our uh, uh, competitors and. Uh, uh, well, how, uh, how uh, Raman, we have two options. Uh, we can either start now or wait until eight, uh, because I think the, all the participants were aiming at eight as a start of discussion, uh, thinking that uh, two lectures will be half an hour. So um, what do you feel will be the right uh, course of action now? Wait for all, I suppose. Okay. Uh, so in this case, we are having a slight break now till eight. Or so, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Till, till eight. Yeah, till eight. Uh, perfect. So uh, we'll have a time to to, to to grab yet another <laughs> cup of coffee or tea uh, or whatever you you prefer, and um, uh, yeah, let's meet in like twenty minutes. Uh, uh, so meanwhile, we will alert all the teams <laughs> that the session is coming and uh, yeah, let's meet in 20 minutes and discuss uh, everything properly. Um, okay. Um, Great.
Hi everyone. Uh, for, for some of you for the first time today, for others yet again. And uh, well, thanks for joining the, the session. So it's uh, a sharp. Uh, Raman, are you with us now? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, so first of all, I would like to introduce uh, once again, uh, Raman Manakhov, uh, who is one of the task creators actually from uh, Apitia Bank. And um, today, uh, this session is solely dedicated to, uh, to chatting and fun, uh, to be more precise, to uh, discussing tasks and solutions, the task, the, the task and uh, different approaches and solutions to this task that was present at the, at the final of IDAO 2021. So, and uh, we have a couple of teams that uh, are going to present their solutions, but let's not uh, limit the session only to this team. So if you, if any of you have uh, any uh, contribution and um, any ideas like to share features, so don't be shy. So uh, Raman, do you have anything else to add for starters? Um, <clears throat> only I, I should say that uh... Guys, you uh, did great uh, because we uh, did our baselines and it was about uh, 4,000 on 4,500 points. Uh, well done. Uh, and I hope uh, you enjoyed our task. Uh, we tried to make it as uh, uh, enjoyable as it possible. Uh, it's not uh, the original task uh, from our bank. Uh, we did some uh, things uh, to make it uh, more uh, interesting for you. So hope you enjoyed. And uh, um, I wondered if you give uh, us some uh, new interesting uh, features or methods uh, we could use in uh, our job. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Raman. Uh, one more time for, uh, well, basically for creating the task and <laughs> making the fun impossible. Um, so uh, let's dive in into the discussion. So let me see who is present already among the teams. Uh, um, okay, uh, I see the representatives of the of the team Dato Plomo. So uh, hi guys. Um, so are you ready to present? <laughs> Yes, of course. Sure. Uh, so, should I uh, give you the um, the right to share the screen? Yeah, please. Okay, sure. So, uh, hi there. Uh, so the stage is yours. Uh, okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um, So do you all see my screen? Yeah, sure. Okay, so <clears throat> hello everybody. We are the Dato Plomo team from France and we are composed of uh, Raphael Surti, Adil Lutin and me. So um, I will introduce our solution in one or two minutes. It will be very fast. So um, to deal with this problem, we use a kind of Bayesian approach uh, and in, instead of predicting directly the cell flag labels, we use uh, three um, quantity estimation and we use the three quantity, uh, quantities that are involved in the scoring matrix. And then we apply a simple decision rule to uh, say if a client is a one or a zero. So to estimate um, the, the, the targets, we estimate in the first time the cell amount by uh, regression. We estimate in second time the, cont the contact cost by regression two. And we finish by estimate the cell flag using a simple classification loss. And um, you, we, we use uh, this three estimation to build uh, a simple uh, reg uh, decision rule. And we say if the cell flag is uh, greater than our threshold, and if the cell amount uh, is greater than the contact cost, we say uh, a client is a is a one. 
So uh, our approach uh, is a kind of voting between a simple classification model that is uh, built to estimate the, the, tar the, the target and the combination of regression model that are used to estimate the quantities that are useful in the, in the, um, the computation of the metrics. So in addition to uh, that uh, solution, we use some classic methods that are used in unbalanced data sets, like oversampling, like undersampling. So we oversampled uh, over the uh, one and uh, undersampled the, the, the zero. We also use uh, target encoding on the most important features that we have found that is education. Uh, we add some noisy feature using aggregates on the, the other ta the table. And uh, we also use a classic method uh, like uh, bagging uh, with legibian. So uh, we probably missed some features that, that are probably important and um, we didn't directly, we, we don't directly uh, estimate the, the metrics by classification. Um, this is a short presentation, but it's all the content of uh, our solution. Thank you. Do you have any questions? So thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, okay, guys, if you have any questions to the team, uh, please uh, do not hesitate. What was the accuracy or other metrics of uh, model which uh, predicted uh, uh, sale amount and uh, and uh, yeah, uh, for, amount of co contacts here? Yeah. Uh, for the sale amounts, uh, it was a regression. Uh, regression. Uh, you you want all the model, all or only the sale amount uh, targets? No, no I, I wonder uh, uh, if uh, there was. Uh, good or poor uh, accuracy on these kind of models? Uh, yes, uh, I think it was uh, 0.96. Okay, D did you compare with some uh, constants? Uh, with some, uh, can you repeat please? Uh, with some uh, constant number. Um, no, we didn't compare. Okay. Okay, any other questions to the team? Okay, <laughs> uh, it doesn't seem so. <laughs> uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, you can, write to the chat if you don't want to speak uh, the microphone uh, both ways works basically uh, yep uh, just uh, do you hear me yes just yep. a few things uh, about uh, i'm part so of, of uh, data oplomo and uh, it, it was interesting that um, uh, predicting cell amount and context contact works uh, better than uh, predicting directly a sale flag. So, uh, so yes, uh, uh, both approach are uh, complementary. Yes, and so we made a, yes, a, a rule to ponderate uh, those two models and yes, both approach were complementary. And we think that uh, a third approach uh, and uh, could, be, could be even better and to, to predict uh, using a classifier uh, if a client um, uh, will, uh, uh, will generate uh, money. Uh, so we miss this and uh, maybe it would be interesting to, to complete our approach with a third, third, third classifier. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, so, uh, any last chance to, to ask uh, Dato Plomo or anything? 
no, not the last one. Uh, you, you can still <laughs> communicate. But uh, yeah, uh, so it doesn't seem that there are any questions. So thanks guys for presenting their, uh, your solution. Um, yeah, I mean, if later on uh, anyone have uh, questions, you can still ask. So uh, let's move on. Um, thank you. Um, so let me see who's else already here. Um, I think I saw guys from random team here. Um, yeah, Ilya most here. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Ilya, hi. Uh, hi. So, uh, will you have a presentation or? I, mean, I don't have slides, but I can present something because I mean, maybe call up with, like a uh, notebook, I mean. Okay, uh, I, I will give you the rights. Let's go organize in a second. Um, okay, uh, you're on. Uh, yeah, the okay, stage to present. Okay, so uh, this is just notebook. So, I mean, our approach was not like very different from others. We just tried to use as many features as possible and fit to um, cat boost in our case. Uh, but uh, I think one thing which might be different from others is what labels we used, like what we try to predict. So, initially, what we tried to predict is just expected again for if we take some person. So here is the formula, basically. If uh, sales and uh, sale amount is about zero, minus uh, like penalty for co calls. Uh, but this didn't work so well, and it doesn't really correspond to uh, what objective is asking us. Because uh, people who are below zero in objective, uh, they don't count at all in, in this object, in, in this like prediction they count. So what we ended up to predict is, uh, let me, uh, a crucial. Uh, so um, uh, here is the exact uh, label to, to predict. So instead of regression to this label, we try and classifier with label whether this uh, expected value is above zero, below zero, or and weight is just absolute value of this expected value. So first, that would sound strange, but actually, it's very it corresponds to uh, the target objective very well, like. We also tried to just optimize direct objective directly. I probably also have some code for it, but it was it was working well, but it was converging super slowly. So yes, yes here it's counted out. So just uh, well, cut boost. So here is cut boost version. So we just uh, we can predict target objective directly, like if we replace step function with sigmoid, but then uh, it it converges very very slowly. So we need like twenty times more steps than this uh, our objective. And why it happens, it's the same reason why for classification people don't predict accuracy. They predict, uh, they, they optimize log loss, not accuracy. So in the same way you can optimize accuracy, but it doesn't converge very well. So our case is exactly the same. So we want some weighted accuracy essentially, but uh, we don't want to optimize it uh, because it's hard to optimize. So we optimize surrogate metric, which is uh, log loss with this weights. And uh, yeah, surprisingly, even so, we moved from uh, this uh, weird metric to log loss. We didn't lose much, much. So in our final submission, we're optimizing it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, I think probably the main difference. So uh, another difference is that uh, uh, we used ensembling, for sure, of course. Uh -huh. So we trained multiple cut boost models and subsets of data. But uh, what we found uh, surprising is that if we use many folds for assembling, like uh, 50 or so, we get less score on scoreboard on public scoreboard. So we end up submitting a smaller amount of folds, just 16. So I'm not sure if it's overfitting the scoreboard or if it's like some real effect, like or some problem with assembling in this case. But uh, yeah, that's uh, one funny effect. And like one final thing I wanted to say is that, okay, here's feature importance from cut boost and uh, what we real, didn't realize before, like two hours before the end of the contest, that there's this column city in a client table. And this column, I mean, uh, one expect, would expect that city ID is some like categorical feature. So we're marking it for cut boost uh, as categorical. And we're getting like 100 times, uh, 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 sorry, 100 points less score. And then uh, by accident, like Kirill from our team, he decided to try to do some feature transformations and added logarithm of ID to the training set and then uh, suddenly score increased. So we instigated and figured out that city was actually not a categorical feature. So it was, I, I have distribution somewhere. 
So or not, but okay, if I don't, if I don't whatever. So it's, uh, okay, okay, so I don't think it's solution, but yeah, city is not a very good feature, it's a numerical feature. So I don't know why, either it's a bug and dataset, some columns are mixed, or it's, uh, it was encoded somehow, but uh, the point is, we should feed it as a um, numerical feature to cut boost and then we get much better score. And that's second on feature importance. Uh, yeah, and uh, as you can see from feature importance, like there are two like, reasonable features, education and city. And for education, it's actually strange because I expect like people with higher education not to take loans, but apparently it, it's the opposite. And uh, city and the rest of features are of smaller importance, but they add something. And yeah, this uh, anonymized features are very important. And out of what we feature engineered is, uh, okay, they are like, this is the first feature engineered feature is this uh, some categorical name from the uh, Apple table and uh, like application table and uh, it's quite low. So feature engineering didn't help much, even though we spent quite a lot of time on it. Okay, so I guess that's uh, pretty much it. So any questions? Thank you. Yeah, it was quite inter interesting about uh, client city uh, because it's uh, just some say uh, hash uh, from the real city uh, where the customer live. Uh, so we will try to use it as a, a numeric feature. <laughs> Quite yeah, it was, it was very surprising for us too. Like, I mean, but uh, on the other hand, from anonymized features, like one of them was looking categorical. It had only like several distinct values. So maybe some two commas were swapped or something like this. I'm not sure. Or like it's a real effect, but it was strange indeed. Yeah, I, I just trying to realize it. <laughs> um, no clue why it's uh, work in this way. Uh, maybe just uh, uh, boosting uh, for boosting is, is a little bit easy to uh, to use uh, the no, uh, numeric feature. I mean, uh, it can be the case to... if it's sorted. If ID is sorted, it can be the case. But the problem is like cut boost smart, right? It does some uh, smart sorting inside computes average like dot or uh, feature and then sorts by it and so on. So it's very strange that uh, if CD is categorical, it's much worse. But yeah. Who knows? Okay, uh, strange, but it's interesting. Any questions? So anyone want, uh, wants to ask a uh, random team about, about the solution? Okay, <laughs> it doesn't seem so. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ilya, thanks a lot for, for, for telling us about your, uh, your solution. Okay, uh, so um, up next, uh, let me check. Um, I think uh, I saw Vladislav Bakhtiev uh, among there. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hey, hi there. Uh, so uh, give me a sec, I will give you their permission to share. Nice t shirt. Yeah, <laughs> the, thank the, you. The, the right one. <laughs> Okay, do you see me, uh, see screen or hear me? I think it's clear. Uh, our yes. team is done scenes and consists of Kirill Ripkin, uh, Narek Mauyan, and me, with Bakhtiev. Let's remind the metric. It is agreement multiplied by loan amount and minus communication cost. And we need to predict the agreement of user as a binary target. 
and uh, we create it in such way. Uh, probability is uh, predicted by classifier, and regressor predicts the own amount. But uh, communication cost is constant because it is pretty random thing. And in our experiments, when we predict communi um, communication cost, it decreases the target metric. So we have only two models, this uh, classifier and regressor. And we uh, mark sample as uh, positive if uh, this net income is positive. Uh, let's go to the feature generation process. Uh, we create a lot of features from transactions, but I don't know how they influence uh, our quality because we have a lot of uh, features and didn't manage to something to clear them and we just put them as it is. Uh, firstly, in transactions per each client, we have uh, some uh, transactions that uh, aggregated by some category. For example, this is a transaction type, for example, um, for which type of product this transaction is done. Consumption of food, cash, electronics, restaurants, and so on. And for each this feature, we can create some uh, numerical and categorical uh, features. First one is the number of, number of unique um, values in this categorical feature. Next one is the top one uh, value in this category. And I think this is a strong category. If we um, do this not by number of transaction by, but by sum of rubles. For example, consumption food uh, is the uh, biggest uh, spend for user, and we uh, create new category that consumption of food is the biggest one. And one interesting uh, for me feature is the rate of top one value. This is the amount of top one value divided by the whole uh, sum of uh, rubles spent for each categories. And this feature correlates very highly with uh, target, but correlation is negative. Uh, this is because uh, I can uh, explain it. My, uh, my hypothesis is that the bigger this value, the, it means that uh, less uh, the user has less uh, variance in the transactions. It means that probably he spends uh, most of the money on food and he will not probably buy some uh, um, clothes, uh, some uh, ca um, cars, and will probably take the credit. Uh, we done these types of features for each of this category in the transaction uh, CSV file. And MCC CD humanized is the mapping of MCC CD uh, with dictionary done uh, given by organizers. Uh, we did this way because uh, we have different MCC CDs uh, mapped to one MCC CD uh, in text. For example, you have two MCC CD codes for one. Uh, category, for example, uh, consumption food. And um, this may help in a, a predicting target. And also we created the same for city and TSP name, but we firstly cleaned the data. Uh, this is the way we did it. Uh, 
for example, Saint Petersburg has many names in datasets, and uh, that's set in, and we uh, did some semi manually, semi automatic process for cleaning this and mapped the most popular cities and um, companies to one uh, name. And I hope this helped. Uh, the next type of feature is the activity of user. Uh, is this is the first uh, month of first transaction, month of first transaction, activity window. This is the uh, difference between the last transaction and uh, first transaction time. Mean monthly activity, it means that how many uh, transactions per month user does. Next one, trend monthly activity. When we construct time series of monthly activity and we calculate correlation between month and uh, mean monthly activity. So it shows how uh, trend uh, between uh, does user become more active or less active in uh, time. And year activity rate uh, represents how many months in a year the user was active. But we divide it by uh, some uh, divider that uh, shows time from first transaction because some users doesn't uh, appear from, uh, from first month and uh, they appear in sixth month and we need to um, to use this information. And uh, the next interesting feature, but I don't know is uh, useful, how much expensive countries client has visited. There are some uh, countries like USA, uh, Japan, Germany, and, and so on. And other like Ukraine, Belarus. And Ukraine, Belarus, I didn't mark as expensive because uh, it is pretty close to Russia, and probably everyone can uh, go to the, these countries, but USA and Japan is very expensive. Uh, next type of transactions is how much clients spend on, uh, on some category. This is the cash, money transfer, electronics, car service, and so on. I choose these uh, categories by logic and uh, because this probably will influence the desire to take a loan or, or credit. Uh, next uh, interesting insight from data is the feature 7 and feature 10 have this scatter plot. And we can see, for example, uh, if we draw some lines, probably each line is different category. So we created a new feature by dividing feature seven by feature 10. And this represents like a derivative or a slope of each line. And uh, I hope that it uh, gives some boost. Other features is the number of calls in the last month how many clients uh, how many times a client has agreed and reject specific product for example a uh, bank previously uh, uh, already gave some proposals to user and we use this information to predict will uh, new will new call uh, be successful or not and is the client a pensioner? I don't think that it is a useful feature, but it is funny one, I think. And I want to say a big thanks to organizers because you spent a lot of time and a lot of energy to create such event for this. And I really appreciate it. That's all. Uh, thanks a lot, Vladislav.
Uh, any questions to him? Oh, yeah. Uh, Roman has a question? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just uh, it was a great presentation. Thank you. It was an e interesting uh, to know about how you uh, did some uh, feature engineering and uh, what uh, kind of feature you used. Important was the transaction feature compared to all other, to other features. Like, how high was the feature importance? Um, I didn't use feature importance because it is not representative. Um, because can boost feature importance is uh, like how many times does it uh, look at this feature to make split? But it may be not a good uh, metric for feature importance because if we have some feature target zero and one, then we need to just make one split on this feature. And it will not give much uh, feature importance to this um, column. Okay, okay, but probably compute some uh, measure, right? To understand which features you should keep, uh, probably like, I don't know, ablation feature importance or something like this. We had very low features from transactions is about 216 and some other uh, features from other tables. But um, at, before the end, in the last hour, we started to create submission and we didn't have time to uh, filter features and uh, look at their importances. So we didn't it. Okay, thanks. Any other comments or questions? So uh, doesn't seem so. Uh, Okay, Vladislav, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, my warmest uh, regrets going to Innapolis. Uh, am I right that you're there now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, no, there is a question actually in the chat box. <laughs> um, did we use uh, evaluation metric in, uh, what do you mean, uh, in objective, for optimization or as validation? We used this as validation, but uh, we didn't optimize metric directly. We optimize only, let me show. Uh, only these two uh, targets. This is the probability of agreement. And the second regressor regresses uh, amount of loan or credit given to this person. And we train this classifier on the whole data that were given, but the regressor is uh, trained only on such data that uh, has agreement equals to one, because we don't want to uh, take into consideration zeros. I hope that this um, answers your question. Thanks. Any other questions, Dubulislav? Uh, or Okay, maybe you have uh, questions to, to Raman, who is uh, here too. <laughs> I don't know. Or, or yet to, to other things. Uh, 
I guess not. <laughs> Ramon, maybe you have anything add, uh, to add? Um, I already said uh, what I wanted to say. Uh, it was great to hear and see uh, what you did in your uh, solutions. Thank you for your presentations. Um, I hope you enjoyed our task and uh, I hope we will uh, see in the next year, maybe uh, maybe with IDAO, maybe somewhere else. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, wish you good luck. Uh, I, I suppose we uh, will uh, see the results tomorrow, yes? On 21st. Yeah, 23rd. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, one last try from my side. Maybe anyone else won't just randomly, <laughs> unexpectedly present to. Um, just uh, let's give her like another minute for anyone else uh, who would potentially want to join in. I have a question about constraints uh, for inference. We have a lot of issues with memory constraints, but uh, times, uh, times, time is not uh, so important because we run around 200 models in the inference and it is okay. But feature generation is the, a lot of, takes a lot of memory. We optimized a lot of uh, float, uh, features and categorical features, for example, for 16 and uh, do label encoding before the feature generation and so on. What, uh, why uh, so such uh, strong memory constraints? Sergey, could you answer this question? Because uh, from outside, uh, we just uh, uh, make uh, our task uh, um, to, to fit the constraints. Uh, yeah, uh, I might be mistaken because I'm uh, I'm more organized than the, um, than the task creator, uh, but. Uh, I might think that the, there were some constraints on the Yandex contest side because the maximum uh, it could it could potentially produce was like uh, what constraint do you have? I think uh, like uh, two thousand or something. Two gigabytes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think four is it is a potential absolute maximum that could be provided, and we just didn't want to risk the like hitting the maximum of production. Uh, so I heard that there. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was a constraint. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So the, there was no particular reasoning behind it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so uh, I think there was some com capacity issues that, uh, that we were afraid that <clears throat> if we give more capacity, the contest could just d die. <laughs> So there was no limit from our side. As a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. So uh, as I said, that uh, if I remember correctly, the limits were on the Yandex contest side. So, yeah, yeah, uh... yeah. So uh, the very last chance to ask anything. <laughs> So I guess I have a question to Roman. So uh, nowadays, a lot of people talk, talk about ethical constraints in uh, machine learning. And I think uh, models like this are especially sensitive to, to it. So I guess, do you have any efforts to make sure like resulting, like if you actually predict whom to call to uh, offer loans, do you have any concerns, uh, uh, any efforts to re resolve ethical constraints? Like maybe for example, it will decide to call men more than women or like the other way or something like this oh, oh no 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 we are living in a great country with no limits on such things uh, yep. for, for for today yeah yet yeah we do not have a, uh, 
some kind of constraints and uh, our and we are not a risk department who uh, should uh, report to our central bank so um, we yeah, we making our models uh, based on uh, our uh, limits uh, as a human beings <laughs> Okay, thanks. I, I think that this kind of things appears when you are trying to um, describe your model for some regulators. Uh, and uh, this is not the case for us. We are customer relationship management department. You're not necessarily can be by simplification, right? Maybe the model decides not to ever call, uh, like, I don't know, women and offer them a loan. So uh, it will be a problem because, uh, I mean, you actually don't offer loans to women. And long term will create some bad effects. But, but OK, thanks. So uh, uh, I guess uh, we are. Uh, to wrap up the session for today. So uh, thanks one more time to all the teams presenting their tasks and uh, thanks to Raman uh, for the task <laughs> itself and for participating too. Uh, I mean, if you have any further questions, uh, the discussion could still continue in, in the chat in Telegram. So, or you can just try to us uh, with these questions. So, uh, so let's call it a day for today. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot for everyone for being with us. And um, uh, congratulations with uh, getting through our both stages. Uh, see you tomorrow. And uh, let's uh, see what results will say in two days uh, on the closing ceremony on April 21st. So. Uh, Okay. Yeah, guys, many thanks, many thanks for you, Sergey, and uh, all the hosts. So, see you next time. Yeah, uh, bye bye, everyone. Good all right. Morning.